This is the game of credit for the for the young adult version. Usually, uh, I do this for more of the adults. You've seen this it's cool. If you're in a, if you're a parent watching this, pay attention. If you are a teenager, uh, more more specifically, in your senior high school or your young adult between the ages of 18 and 25, you want to pay attention to this because for the parents, one, I'm going to go over how your young ones can, um, well, one, how they're going to learn credit, two, how to establish it, three, how to use it responsibly and not treat it as something that you just need it when you need it and afterwards you throw it away, you don't care, and then you come back and then you realize, I should took I should take care of this four, five, ten years ago because now I need it. So, I call this a game of credit because it is a game, um, but it's it's a game that a lot of people don't know the rules to, and it's hard to play a game, forget winning, it's hard to play a game that you don't understand the rules to. If you don't understand the rules, you're like, how many houses work, and then how am I supposed to make this thing, this credit score work, and a lot of people um, don't seem to understand it. Even one second. All right. So this is why I called the game because there are rules. You can earn points, you can lose points, but more importantly, you can always get those points back. Remember that. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's get into it. So there's a pop quiz. Mm -hmm. How old is credit? Is it A, 5,000 years old, B, 70, or C, about 150, maybe 200 years old? Wow. You got a guess for me, sir? Wow, I guess I'll go I'll go with A. All right, we're going with A. And so for those watching, place your bets. Here we go. The answer is 5,000 years old. Wow. Credit is wow. nothing new. We think it's new because no one teaches it, but it's old. It's up there with insurance and annuities. It is old as dirt, basically, wow. okay? Wow. Little history real quick. So summer, 3500 BC, it's the first urban civilization with about 90% of its population living in cities, and it's thought that consumer loans were first used here. Mm. That's, so consumer loans are old. <laughs> mm. Mm. Uh, the Code of Hammurabi is written in 1800 BC, and this formalizes the first known laws uh, around credit and establishes the maximum interest rates that can be used legally. So loans of grain, the most you can charge interest-wise is 33.3% per year. For silver, it's 20% per year, which is high, but hey, is what it is. But back then, to be valid, the loans had to be witnessed by a public official and recorded as a contract. Wow. Roman Republic, 50 BC. So uh, Cicero notes that his neighbor bought 625 acres of land for 11.5 million. I, must, I, I think it's called pronounced Cicero's. So the question is, did they literally carry 11 and a half tons of coins through, this, through the streets of Rome? No. Mm -hmm. He's going through credit and paper. I'm going to read the translation. He uses credit to complete the purchase. Dark Ages, great time in human history, collapse of the Western Roman Empire, economic activity grinds to a halt. The church at this time bans usury, which is the act of, or practice of charging interest on loans for all laymen under Charlemagne's rule. Lend expect nothing in return. Luke 6 35. Age discarded 1500. So, this time European explorers and merchants uh, begin to do trade missions and explore far away lands. And so, they need capital and they need credit. 1545, England, after the Reformation, the first country is England to establish a legal rate of interest. And it's 1545, during the reign of Henry VIII, the rate is set at 10%. Spoiler alert England tends to lead the way from this from this point forward. Uh, 1870, I mean, um, yeah, 1787, Jeremy, philosopher Jeremy Bentham, he writes a treatise called A Defensive Use Street. We argues, hey, look, we have too many restrictions on ability to raise capital innovation and interest rates. We, we can't, we're limited to what we can do, which is true, until you go too far in the other direction with seeing these credit cards. We'll get into that. So if risky new ventures can't be funded, your growth is limited. And that's a point within reason. 1803 England. So the credit reporting itself started in England in that year, in the early early 19th century. English tailors would come together to swap information about customers who failed to sell their debts. It's the earliest available count of credit reporting we have. And this is this, this where it gets crazy. 1826 in England, the Manchester and Guard Society is formed and begins issuing a monthly newsletter with information publicly about people who failed to pay their debts. Now, wow. compared to today, 
<laughs> you ain't getting a credit report from somebody. You with the app. And get it illegally, that's fraud. Yeah. Back then, they weren't playing games. They were like, I go to Lance. Hey, Lance. Lance, Matt, how you doing? How's business? It's good. Um, I need to borrow $100,000. Lance would go, give me a second. Look up the paper. Find <laughs> the phone go, what? No. <laughs> no. Wow. Back then, wow. England didn't play. Oh, wow. Very different to today. <laughs> he was like, no, nah, I need you money. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Atlanta 1899, it's the retail credit, the retail credit companies founded and begins making lists of all the credit worthy customers. This company changed its name to Equifax. So Equifax is the oldest out of the three major credit agencies in the United States. Wow. Yep. It's crazy stuff, you know? Mm. So 1955 in the United States, early credit reporter, reporters used millions of index cards sort of a mass flying system to keep track of, to, to keep track of consumers in the country and around the country so to get the information back then they would look up agencies I mean um they uh look up local newspapers for notices for notice of people got arrested promotions marriages deaths and would attach this, this information to the mm -hmm. individual credit profiles but unfortunately back then they tended to focus more on the negative stuff that, that would happen to people versus like the good stuff 1964, the U.S. Association of Oops, hold on, U Association of Credit uh, Bureaus in the United States they conducted the first studies into the using a computer for credit reporting, and the accuracy date actually data is improved around this time by standard standardizing credit application forms. And then fast forward to today, we have this thing called FICO. FICO stands for Fair Isaac Corporation. That started in the 80s. Wow. Okay? Oh. Yeah, FICO's been around for a while. Um, Vantage credit, the rent, the Vantage credit score model started in 2006 by the three credit bureaus. I'm getting ahead, but that leads into this. Here's something that most adults don't know. I always, people always know, all right, when it comes to credit, what's the one thing people know? It's what? Paying your bills on time. Like everybody knows that. After that, people have no idea how to credit. So your credit score has five different components. 35% mm -hmm. is payment history. Everyone seems to know that. 30% is, is it says your amounts owed, but it's credit utilization. So it looks at all the available credit you have. You want to be using at the bare minimum less than 30% of your available credit. And that looks at all the credit you have on each card individually and overall. So for example, you have a hundred thousand dollars in credit of, of overall, you don't want to use more than more than 30 grand. And then let's say individually out of the out of that hundred thousand divided by you know um five of cards, that's what like fifty I can't math right now, but basically if you have a hundred thousand dollars credit on over five cards, if you go about 30 thirty percent of, of utilization on one card, your score will fall. Not a whole lot, but it will. But if you max out all the cards on, on the balances, your score will tank. And I see this with a lot of adults, okay. So keep the balance low, way below 30%. Ideally, you can keep it at 10%, 2%. When you get the bill, pay it off in full if you can, or just pay it out as much as you can. And because you want to keep the, that utilization low, that favors the algorithm. And then when people look at credit report, they see, oh, you're very responsive to credit. You, don't, you, you, you pay your balances off, or you're not using a whole lot. Mm -hmm. That then leads into length of credit history. What this means, it looks at all of um, all the open accounts you have, and gives an average age. Do you know the age and what points you get? There is no rushing this part. You can only build this through time and years. That's how it works. And it's one of the reasons why credit takes so time to build. I need to say this to you. Credit is a marathon. If you're watching this and you're 18, start building it now. Now, because in two years, three years, five years, when you need it, you'll be glad you did. And then you'll have a reflecting history and that's also, that also is a reflection of your financial character or financial rep, uh, reputation. You need to have that. Next chunk is having a mixed credit. What that, what that looks at is what kind of accounts do you have? Do you have some credit cards, maybe one or two um, revolving credit, maybe an installment loan? An installment loan is any loan you pay monthly. That's like a car note, mortgage, personal loan, all right? Then you can also have being reported on your, on your credit profile, your rent, um, you have other, you, you can also have your utilities being reported on there, cell phone payments, streaming services. There's a whole host of other uh, credit bills out there that they'll help add to the mix. 
and that'll help add to your overall credit profile and history and lenders like that they do look at that stuff. Even, even if it seems like it's small, they take it very seriously. Last chunk is 10%, any new credit, any new accounts you have, and hard inquiries. Hard inquiries are very important. People never talk about them, but lenders will, companies, lenders, even employers will look at where you, where you have applied to. If you have too many hard inquiries, it's a red flag. If you have more hard inquiries, hard inquiries, then open accounts, that's a red flag, okay? Do you want to keep those to a minimum and not just apply willy-nilly everywhere? Um, because, again, when, when a lender a company looks at your credit report, they're seeing multiple tiers, and you have a whole bunch of hard inquiries, it just makes you look desperate. They don't want you to be hungry. They want you to be solid and... Um, they, they want you to look solid on paper, basically, to keep it simple, okay? And one thing I'll say is, too, Speaking of credit cards, if you don't ever use credit cards um, and you don't have any, you, you're, they're part of the algorithm. If you don't have any, you're screwing yourself out of 30% 30, 30 of your credit score. I have been adults that say, they say, I have no credit cards. And I'm like, great, you're missing 30% of your credit score because if all you have are installment loans on your file, meaning again, car note, mortgage, or personal loan, so long as you're paying that loan on time, you get points for it. It's a good thing. But eventually, you want to pay it off. When you do pay it off, it's no longer giving you um, active points to your score. So your scores are like stagnate and stops. So this is why having credit cards when you use them responsibly and strategically, as I as I say, that never closes. That adds your um, length credit history, and that helps you eventually get into the 700s and eventually 800s. The lenders like to see; it. they love it, they crave it, they want it, they need it. When they see somebody have one, two, three, four, five credit cards that they've had for five, ten plus years. When you have that on your credit report, you, what you're telling a lender or any company is, you can trust me. I've been doing this for years. Get the receipts. Say something, right? Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you want to look on paper. <laughs> All right. So I think I may ask this question to you, but what are the four tiers to your credit report? And put pop, pop quiz in there because there's stuff people don't know. Wow. Good question. Yeah, no. So I asked it. <laughs> wow. No, that's a, yeah, that's a really good question. Yeah, put, put it in the chat box if you know it. If you know what the four tiers of your credit report are, put it in the chat box. That's a yeah. really good question. Yeah, because most people don't know. Most people, what they focus on are two things. So the answer is personal information, hard inquiries, your accounts, and public record, okay? Most people focus on their accounts and their score. That's like basically one fourth out of your total credit report. Here's the next question. Out of these four tiers, personal information, hard inquiries, your accounts, all record, which of these do you want to make sure is the most up to date? That's a good question. People want to know this. Mm. <laughs> you got a guess, Lance? Hey. Wow. Wow. I mean, it seems like all of them, but <laughs> I mean, right. But I guess what personal information? Is, is that your guess? I'm, I'm not going to hate you for wrong. I'm just going to be like, all right, here's what it is. That's a good question because I'm thinking all of them. But then right. if I had to choose one, I would say personal information. So, Okay. <laughs> good choice. I okay. like it. I like it. See, you're smart. <laughs> okay. All right. So here's why this is so important. For young ones watch, this is very important. The personal information section is going to contain your name, any variations or aliases of your name, your birth date, your social, your phone number, current address, all the addresses you've lived at and whatever employers that you've worked at, okay? This is the rugged information. This is very important because as you go around, get older, and as you go through life, that's going to rack up a whole bunch of information. The problem is when you're going to apply for an apartment, credit card, mortgage, anything requires a credit check, and you're telling people, hey, my name is Matt Dillingham, where your name is, but you got a whole bunch of variants of your name, old addresses, and one, it makes you look at best shady. Two, it makes you look fraudulent because they'll be like, are you sure about this? Because we don't know. The other thing, too, is very important to know is that back in the day, it didn't really matter if you, if you had all this crap on there because you had to go in person to meet someone. And, you, and at that point, you're going to give them some identification to verify you are, like your ID, driver's license, tax returns, whatever. That's going to say, hey, I know who I am. Nowadays, everything's automated and online. So what happens is when you apply for something, the algorithm then has to go through every single possible combination of name and address on your credit profile, and that slows things down. 
And then what can happen is you, you get kicked out of what's called automatic underwriting, then it goes to someone else, and then they scrutinize your information even more. And this is actually has caused people to have some delays and trouble in getting approved for home loans. Mm -hmm. No one talks about this, okay? The other side to it is this. Um, if you if you don't take care of your credit, it becomes damaged. What happens is, we'll get this in a bit, you have a collection account on your file. Anything in this section is old, outdated, and erroneous or attached to negative items in your credit profile. So, for example, as you get older, at one address, you know, over like five years, you could create a collection account and also hard inquiries. When you dispute that account with the bureaus, they get lazy. They will um, look at the collection account you're disputing and look, see in the section what name, what name and address and stuff is attached to that. And they'll come back and say, oh, we can't delete it. It's verified. It was you. Here's the issue. One, I've had clients look at the section. They've had their names misspelled. My name's been misspelled. I want client who's listed as a state highway. I've had clients look at the section. They've had addresses on there that they've never lived at. So the question becomes, how are you verifying it was me when that information, I, that's not me at all? Okay. Also, when it comes to your name, you want to make sure your name is spelled correctly on all three bureaus. There's three bureaus because if your name is misspelled by just one letter, two things. One, it makes everything else on your credit report fraudulent because two, that's a whole different person on paper, which means you can have their negative outs based on your credit report. That happens and they will not tell you unless you look at this once a month or you have credit monitoring. It'll tell you. Okay. Um, also, too, as well, with your name, if you're married, you want to take your main name off because that makes you right for fraud. People can get the information, apply for stuff in your name. If you got divorced, they got their married name because, again, it happened to a client of mine. Someone had applied for credit in their maiden name, is on a credit report, and they, didn't, and they were married. They didn't take it off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, for those of you who are just building a credit journey, rem remember this because when you have to, update, have, to, have to update this information, you want to do that, do that from time to time. You call into the credit bureaus, you want to have one name, the way it's listed on your social security card, one phone number, make sure you have one social, because if, you have, if you're a junior, it's common to have your dad's name on your file, your dad's social security number. I have one client who had three different social security card, social security numbers on her credit report. And again, they will not tell you until you call and find out. So one social security number, one current address, no old addresses, one current employer. That way you look clean and mean and lean. I'm rhyming and I'm not supposed to, but you get you get them going here, right? Long, it's a lot of information, but it's important to know because a lot of people don't know this. So now they're having to go back and clean up stuff they did in the past. Now you know how to prevent that. Or, or, or if you do control, but you now know how to rectify it. That's the important part. So, and I think I said when you do this part, you can, you can really score anywhere between 20 and 70 points by itself. And it can be done. So if you're looking to start building credit, here's the thing. If you're a parent watching this, there's one thing you can do. Um, or if you're 17, 18, you can uh, add your child as an authorized user to one, maybe two credit cards. Okay. The creditor obviously is going to send you a second card. They do not need the card to do anything. What happens is when they get added on as an authorized user, that credit, the uh, credit history of the account, then gets added to their credit profile. What this does is it gives them instant history on their credit profile. And that's a good thing. They You want to give them a head start, gives them a history, one or two, then as long as they're working, okay, they can then apply for a secure card and start building credit in their name. Because I'll say this too, you do not want to use to or if you're a child or 18 year old you don't want to go to your friends and family and say hey, can you add me an author as user and they have like five authors user in your on your credit report and you you're like oh, i'm a 700 i'm good you can still be declined why because in your credit report when it counts in your name it'll say you know it'll say you you you'll, you'll be able to tell in your report it'll say um in what, what kind of what kind of accountant it is if there's an authorized user it'll say authorized user and then when a person or machine looks at it it's going to go you didn't make this account you didn't create this because if you have an account on your file that's, that's 20 22 years old and you're 18 right. someone's going to go how did you start getting credit the, the math doesn't doesn't make, doesn't make sense right so you can have one or two but what's going to help you and what's going to matter most and you start building credit in your name it's called primary accounts so i recommend using self and kickoff real quick Kickoff is an online store, and what they'll do, they don't do a credit check. Self doesn't do credit check at all. 
uh, Kickoff is an online store, and they have different the program has changed. Basically, they'll start out with a with a revolving line of credit for like five hundred bucks to, to then buy books and courses from their store. And when they first started off, you could buy a course for like twenty bucks, and they they would break up the monthly they break up that purchase into monthly payments of two bucks a month, but no interest, no fees, cheap. They've added new stuff now where you can pay like ten bucks a month and report to all their bureaus. You can do it. It's cheap. Do it. Start building credit history. Get the revolving line report. Buy a course to pay it off. It's easy. It's simple, and it builds up. It'll help you over time in the long run. Self, what they do is you'll apply with them to have you pay on um, an application fee. I think it's like twelve bucks now. No credit check. And what they'll do is they'll open up. A a CD in your name, a certificate, a certificate of deposit, but it reports to your credit report and all three bureaus as a loan. So what happens is, and also you can choose your monthly payment and the term. The longer the term, the more history you get, the cheaper the monthly payment. So you can build for like twenty five bucks a month. Also, as you're doing this, as it's as reported as a loan, as you're paying that monthly payment, it's also taking some, taking some of that money and putting away into a savings account that you can't access, right? So after you made three on time payments, what happens is what they do, they'll say, hey, you're paying and you're paying your credit builder. Great. You can now apply for our secure credit card. You want to apply for it. Again, it all counts in the long run. It starts you off with a very low limit, 100 bucks. But here's the thing. 100 bucks, fine. Oh, and it's a secure card and, and secure card, there's no credit check. So you apply for it. And so every time you pay to credit builder, um, also it's using that money that it's using money that you're paying into, it's saving it and adding to the credit limit. So after like another three on time payments, you can raise the credit limit from by, by 25 bucks. So it starts up at hundred, raised to 125, 150, good. Since it's that low, buy like one thing a month, bag of chips, I don't care, some, some, some for like 14 bucks a month, keep it low, keep it cheap. But what they then do after a while is, I don't know how long it takes, they won't tell you this, They'll then change it from a secure card to an unsecure card and raise them by some five bucks, right? So now as you're paying the credit builder, you're getting a hundred hundred credit limit raised every, you know, every like two, three, four, six months, whatever. So long as you're keeping the balance low and you're paying it on time, they will do that. Okay. So I like that. Um, and they also have other stuff too, as well. You can add your own rental history, um, for like seven bucks a month. Um, I recommend boom pay if you're renting, especially if you're renting at 18, you're living on your own. You want to get the rental history as your credit report because eventually you, you won't own a home. Mm -hmm. So if you have four or five years of rental history in your credit report, your score will look great. Your history will, be, your history will look awesome. And then when you apply to a mortgage, a, a loan, um, a mortgage place, underwriting going to go, wow, you've been paying rent for five years. You're only like 22 or 25, whatever. That's a great thing. It makes you look amazing in their eyes. So. Yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's more out there. I listed this to you because we, we could be on it for a while. There's, yeah. there's a lot. Like it's just. Yeah. Uh, and uh, okay, one I thing about yeah. the benefit of Bombay for the rental history, but this whole thing about the self and the kickoff, I'm thinking, why not just skip that and just go straight to the secure credit card, which will then become unsecured later. Oh, uh, well, the, the self, they, they build you up because a lot of people, the problem with secure card is that they still require a credit check. And if you're brand new, this bypasses all that. I do have a credit builder where it is a secure card. There's no credit check. The downside is that whatever limit you put on there, 500, 600, 200, it stays that limit forever. Okay. And I was like, uh, if you have to, great, but use it to then get other credit in your name. So... Okay, because I was just thinking that, well, wait, I was thinking that like Capital One, say, or Chase or whatever, even if you have no credit history, if you're giving them a hundred bucks, won't they still give you a secured credit card if you're giving them? The uh, I don't know, but banks, my like, banks don't, <laughs> banks, banks have credit history, you know what I mean? That's why I'm saying like, this stuff allows our billing credit in their name and then, and then get that and then. Okay. See, they start here and then go there. They're going to have a much better chance of getting approved. I don't know okay. capital one's underwriting because right now the economy is contracting and lenders tighten up on things. I got this you. is something you can start right away and then you can start building, getting rolling credit and using a kickoff. Not so much, but again, it's all about right. building credit history now because it's going to show down a lot. I used self kickoff to get myself a brand new car three years ago. I've been car carless for 10 years. Okay. Mason baby stuff, when it comes to it, they, they see it, they go, okay, good. I did my score, boom. So, 
Okay. That's the only thing about banks. I'll say this because ask them. Say, hey, are you going to are you going are you going to going to do a credit check for me for me to get a secure card at eighteen or nineteen? If they do, it's like, all right, you know what I mean. Yeah. But if they do, okay. uh, if they don't do it, add the stuff on here, start building the revolving accounts, getting that credit mix going, and then you can build up from there. Being okay. alive, so perfect, perfect. Um, and then this one. Mm. Oh, try. So this is a good thing that so if you're 18, you don't want to go overboard with this stuff because you're only so young, you're only working so much. It's not like you you're not like you're not like you're working for you know 10 years, 15, you got more money, you can add on stuff. Mm -hmm. Start slow. Again, right. start with two, two to two to three counts. I'd say at least two, and you can build credit for cheap. If you did kickoff and, and self, you're paying 30 bucks a month to build credit. That's cheap. And the reason why you start cheap is this. Here's why. When it comes to your overall credit score, okay, 35% is payment history. Missing, having just one late payment can take your credit score anywhere between 50 to 150 points. The higher credit score, the more you can lose, right? So if that's the case, if I'm paying 30 bucks a month to build credit and someone else is paying 300 bucks a month to build credit, missing a payment either one kills your credit score. So why not be cheap for now while you can and reap the same benefits, not to worry about it. It's like, it's, 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 it's still going to, still going to ding you the same. So it's still, 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 it'll still reward you the same. So why not do cheap for right now? You don't have to worry about it and still reap all the benefits. Work smart, not harder, right? Now, eventually, when you're paying rent or uh, mortgage, it's going to go up. Or car, that's fine as it is. But for right now, keep it cheap and reap the same benefits. I ain't going to worry about it, you know? So keep that utilization low. Um, you know, a Stalman account, I recommend itself. It's cheap. Do the, do the kickoff. Start there. That's all that matters. Starting there, planting the seeds this way down the line. You can reap the benefits of it because you will need it one day. You want to be able to have you don't, you stab when you do, you have no issues. So, and more than this. So, everyone probably knows about credit karma. And if you're an adult watching this or you're a young adult, I'm going to tell you this throw that crap in the trash. It's trash. <laughs> they got sued by the FTC, by the way, for giving, for giving people false approvals because what you don't understand is that credit karma is not the product, mm -hmm. you're the product. Because they have your, your financial information on behavior, and that's how they would say, "Oh, you have outstanding uh, outstanding approvals for uh, a standing chance of, of getting approval for this credit card loan because they have your information." And then when you click on it, where they get approved or not, they get paid for it. And so they got greedy and started lying to people, say, "Oh, you're approved." They got sued like three million bucks, something like that. Oh yeah. So the other thing about credit karma is that they're only, they're only giving you two out of three credit agencies. There's Equifax, TransUnion, Experian. They're giving you TransUnion, Equifax. So you're getting two thirds of the pie. It's not giving you FICO score. It's giving you advanced credit score. I'll cover the next slide. So if you don't know any better to start, do not rely on it because no company, no lender. I've talked to so many realtors, law officers. When you say credit karma, they want to roll their eyes in the back of their heads because you, you they can't. I'm trying to be respectful. Right. No one's going to use this score. Right. Nobody. So throw it in the trash. Get rid of it. Delete it. I don't care. Whatever. But Matt, Matt, quick question though. Would you say though, at least it kind of gives you a ballpark? Is yeah, a ball. Like, uh, like I said, if you don't know any better, start. Right. But now you know better. Just, just. All right. <laughs> just throw that crap away. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um. Okay. I'm getting this fight good stuff. So. A credit card, when you get your first credit card, it is not spending cash. It's the bank's money. When you get your first credit card, you're going to look, ooh, I got $500. No, you don't. You have $500 of credit. The uh, bank's money. What, what, what do I mean by that? Okay. When you start getting having your own bank account and savings account, you start, start spending money. You there is a chance that you may have a fraudulent charge on your checking account. Here's the difference. When it's a fraudulent charge on your checking account, you lose money, the bank will then cut off your card and all that stuff for reasons, and then they do their investigation to see 
if it really was a fraudulent charge. Now, depending on the bank, they're gonna make you wait. They'll say, hey, we'll credit you the money if we de if we deem it's a fraudulent charge. But that's your money. And you had to wait nine, 10 business days. I mean, it could have been 500 bucks. You may need that for something. Now you gotta wait. When it's a credit card, there's a reason why I say zero fraud liability. Because if you call them and go, hey, I didn't make charge of a credit card, they're going to nip in the butt quick and go, oh, no, okay, yep, reimburse it, great, cool. That's your because it's their money. Another tip, when you put your money in a bank, they loan it out to God knows what in, in investing it and making money off your money. Therefore, they're not such a, therefore, they're not such in a rush to rectify your situation for when it's their money. Oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to lose money. We're the bank. We can't do that. Oh, no. So, yeah, that's why. Treat it as such. Use it wisely and learn to leverage credit. We won't do that in this, in this, in this class. Um, it's a tool. Ultimately, you want to use it to, uh, it's part of your financial picture it's a marathon um you need to care about all the time not just when you need it it's about building it now and to reap the rewards later because you're trying to be a homeowner start building it now um because what it does by tool it, it's literally a tool it's been around for thousands of years and literally it's like okay we're trying to get a house houses are what five hundred thousand six hundred thousand instead of you trying to get that money in cash it collapses time because what you're because what does is they have a record of you of all the people who paid on time. They go, oh okay, they paid this this and this, and they had this and this and this, and they they, they now they've had you know their credit limits were raised, all that stuff. We can trust you with this five hundred thousand alone. Collapses time, leverage, boom. Then, as you can build your credit with your mortgage, what you can then do as you build equity, no form of credit, and use that equity to then not just buy a new house unless you need to. But use it to buy um, income producing assets. Again, collapsing time. You use assets to produce you money cash flow to pay off the HELOC, whatever, and your mortgage. That's how you leverage it as a tool, not just cool, man. I got a mortgage now. I got home making like credit. I'm going to go on a vacation, spend money like it's nothing. Because then when a bill comes due, you're going to feel kind of stupid or you're going to feel this type of way. You don't want to do that. So that is something that's very important. And it's something I wish I was told when I was 18, 17. And here's the benefits to all say this. It's not just for responsibly things, but if you're trying to like start a business, you want to invest all these things, credit's going to help you do that much faster because you'll have a record saying, hey, I can pay people back. You enjoy the low interest rates, you know, get, a, get mortgages, um, other things too, like it can help you with getting a job. So FICO Advantage, I understand it's very, 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 very important. FICO, like I said, started in the 1980s. It is, is the score that's used by 90% of the companies in the United States. 10% of those companies use Vantage. That's why credit card money, you can throw it away. Um, the difference between the two is this. FICO scores tend to be lower than Vantage, than your Vantage credit score. So what you see on credit karma tends to be about 30, 50 points. For some people, 100 points higher than your FICO score. Okay? Then... The other thing, too, is you might be wondering, okay, well, is, do I have one true credit score? You don't. There's over 65 different credit score models, so you have over 65 different credit scores. To make it more confusing, within FICO and Vantage, there's different updates, and they come out every five, six, seven years to lenders and companies, but lenders and companies are not required by law to use those updates. And if they do want the update, they have to pay money for it. So you have different companies on different updates. This is why your credit score looks different, because... They're, they're also not members, not a member of every bureau. Then you're using a different FICO update. And then it also comes to play the information on the credit report, giving you a different credit score. It's the nature of the beast. So currently right now with Vantage, we have 2.0, 3.0, 4.0. FICO, we have 2, 4, 5, 8, 9, and now 10. Um, the difference between these and 10 is this. If you're on FICO 8 or FICO 5, right, when you get your credit report pulled, by somebody, they're giving a snapshot of your credit report at this moment in time. What they did not see, what they did not see was your credit report six months ago, a year ago, unless you came them and came them, um, you know, six months ago and, and changed it. 
FICO 10 is different. FICO 10 gives lenders a look back into your credit history two years, and they see pretty much everything. What you disputed, what you deleted. Basically, to sum it up, it's a trend. If you're paying, if you're if you're paying your debt down and the trend goes up like this, it's a good thing. If you're just not caring and the trend is down, then your score is going to be lower. So it's looking at the trend of you, what you do, what you've been doing for the last two years. The reason why they do this, I need to mention, is because they're trying to predict your behavior in the future. They're trying to not lose money but get their money back, and that's what it is. Do I agree with FICO 10? No, because unfortunately. You can get your credit fixed, repair it, and you're actually doing the right thing. Be responsible. Go apply someplace to use FICO 10, and your score comes back, you know, in like the low sixes because it's looking at the trend that we did in the last two years and not what we're doing now. So keep this in mind and just know one piece of advice. If you're going to apply somewhere, ask them, hey, what credit score do I need? If they know this, what credit score model you're using? What bureau do you pull from or bureaus? Ask before you do. Go back, check, see where you're at, and see how much of a chance you'll have. I can't guarantee you'll get approved every single time, but you need to know where you stand before you apply. Most people don't. They just do it willy-nilly. They hope and pray, and then they're like, oh, I got approved. I didn't get approved, but I understand it. Ask beforehand. Then if you know you can't get you use something to work towards to get there. Again, the marathon. Um, I gotta change up a little bit. Um, there's an app called Purchase. I don't know that was using uh, what was that using? That was adding at the time streaming services. At the time, it was only available for iPhone. I don't know if it's available on Android. But as I said before, you can do chili payments, cell phone payments, Netflix. You can use Experian Boost. Experian Boost is free. That only adds your Experian, Experian credit profile. And what that will do, I recommend that because it's free. You um when you log into or create your account with Experian, um, when you're doing, when you're doing Experian Boost, it will um have you look up whatever bank you use and automatically um have you in your your bank login. You you won't share with them. It's just so that it can go in and look at your banking history to see what payments you made to self payments, utilities, and payments to Netflix. And I think it may have added some more stuff. So long as you've made three months of payments consecutively or more, they'll add as a, as an added um. Uh, trade line to your profile so if you pay netflix and self payments and you should payments for like a year and a half you get three different year and a half trade lines added to your credit profile and the good thing is um if you miss the payment like you don't pay whatever it, you, you won't you won't get reported as as a late payment so it's a benefit to that so because it's not like a loan or something sometimes it happens people get behind whatever so I'll do that yeah so and again, rent, rent reporters, boom pay, just different things you can add to your credit history that don't require you to necessarily get a credit card, that the check credit for cell phone, utilities, rent, but they don't report it. Unless you say, I'm not paying you, then they do. So might as well get, get it now. So last question, when do you stop building credit? After A65? You submit a special form to the bureaus at the 72 that says, hey, I'm retired. Hopefully you can retire. Or C, never. <laughs> C, never. Yeah, sir, never. And it really is never, unfortunately. And we have one client, um, never became a client. I feel bad. He was a veteran. He was like, he had a caretaker, I think in the 70s. Trying to get a VA loan, got declined due to credit history. And it's like, Really? Yes. Even if you're that old, served the country like I did, mm -hmm. they don't. It doesn't matter if that is not in check. It don't. It don't matter. So it is a lifelong thing. So avoid it of just needing it when you need it. And then a lot of people do. It happens. Credit gets fixed. They got the house, and then they magically don't look at it or whatever. And then they're like, "Oh, it got fixed. It, it got jacked up." A lot of people. So, um. The other ways the credit has effects, and it's got on the hand. You want health insurance, car insurance, homeowner's insurance, and life insurance. They all check your credit. What I don't agree with is why, because it's not like if you have bad credit history that translates to, that translates you into having a bad driving behavior. 
Makes no sense. Because I've been prepared for years, and I, I've only been in one accident when I was 18. <laughs> go, let's go figure, right? Now, I had one guy, uh, he was a cert certified financial planner, and he told me he actually had life insurance carriers. This is a real thing that did a credit check and it was not up to par, they would decline your life insurance based off of that. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow, no joke, not a joke. I don't know which ones they are, but they all look into it. So if your credit's not that great, you're paying high rates in insurance. Um, I feel like health and life should only deal with health, car, and it should only deal with like your driving record at home, should only deal with I don't know, the area you live in, whatever they look at, but whatever. Hospital check credit too as well. Hospitals are a business. People forget that. Mm. It's a soft pool, but they still check it. Even you have, even you already have insurance because they're concerned as well. If you need some expensive operations like 100 k mm. and your insurance only pays so much, the rest is on you. You know what I mean? Um, this is one this is one I can personally do. So employers will check your credit and you're having bad credit, especially in government and certain certain financial institutions can stop you from stop you from getting a promotion, lateral move. Um everyone knows that well, I shouldn't say it's majority people know that having bad credit costs you a lot of money, but it can also deny you money, not just form of loans or mortgage, like actual opportunities. Um 2016, when I was living in Maryland, I have a car. I was taking a bus, Uber everywhere, and I was um, trying to get an, um, trying to become a life insurance, life insurance agent with New York Life, mm -hmm. biggest insurance company in the United States. And I was there at the with the lady who was recruiting me, <clears throat> and she was talking about the opportunity. I was on the product, uh, what we could do. I was all about it, and I was like, I need this opportunity because this, this could help me um, become financially stable, and I really wanted something I could do and build. So we're talking more. I'm like, hey, I do. I go to events. I read personal development books. I'm I'm big on working myself. Like, I'm a car. I will work with you. I'll make it work if you work with me. She goes, yes, we'll do it. Great. There's a background check. No issue. There's a credit check. I went, I'm not going to make it. And she goes, no, no, you'll be fine. I'm like, I'm not going to make it. Somehow I leave the office, allowing them to run my credit. About a week later, she calls me back. And she's like, hey, man, on my hand. She goes, have you seen what's on your credit report? I felt the judgment, the disdain in her voice. And she was like, she had it in front of her, you have late payments with this, student loan late payment with no, 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 no. And I was like, right. <laughs> like, thanks. Hung with the phone. I was like, it just sucked. So if you ever did, been denied in a position due to due to bad credit, I understand. Wow. It shouldn't stop you, but unfortunately, the rule is he who has the gold makes the rules. Mm. Well, who you pays you salary makes the rules, and that's what they decide. That's what they decide, you know. So do not think oh, I'm still going to work. Nah, depending on where you will go, what you want to do, they will check that sucker. And then here's the other thing too. I've had I've had the embarrassing moment of even if you have bad credit. And they look at it and they won't and they don't decline you for it, you then have to write an explanation as to why your credit sucks. Mm -hmm. It's very humble to go, I screwed up because of whatever, blah, blah, was on their business. Because here's the thing. Mm -hmm. People with bad credit don't have bad credit just because they just because they don't care. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it gets bad because they lost a job, the economy falls through, divorce. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. Or they get sick. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. now you get to now you, now, you, now you get to devolve to an employer who really doesn't seem to care about you, about your personal life, and just why you have bad credit. You could have had a rough time in life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it happens. So understand this: it's not just about getting a loan and place to live. It's to the point where it affects you in almost all areas of your life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Last question this is an important one: Should you co-sign? Wow. No. Great answer. Because you, you, wow. you shouldn't. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're watching this, don't co-sign. Why? Because when you co-sign for someone, that account you're, you're co-signing for goes on your credit report and theirs. Mm. And if they miss a payment, you miss a payment. If they don't pay, they count for you to pay. And let me back a little bit. When you're an authorized user in a credit card, parents and young adults, 
make sure that when you're added such, you trust the person because like the co-signing, if the person who owns the account misses a payment, you miss payment. If they jack the balance up, the balance goes up on you and you're facing the, the negative re repercussion of it. So make sure that if you become be, become added as become added as an added, added as an AU, they're responsible and they never they always pay the balance off because if not, you're at the mercy of what they're doing that's jacking your credit. When you're co-signing, the only the only way to get off your file is oh, there's a way to do it. I forgot. I think it was the article by Capital One. You got to talk to the person. They had to agree to take you off or something. Mm. Some there's a way to do it. They had to like I forget what it was. I'm not going to say what it is because I'll, I'll jack it up. But the the other way that that that's surefire way to get the to get the account off your credit report is to have both of you not pay it, which is dumb. You get marked late 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. Then the account either gets charged off or sent to a debt collector. Then you're disputed. So just don't do it. Save yourself the time, energy, um, and the emotional crap that comes with it. It's just not worth it. So mm -hmm. but yeah, but that's it, man. That's good. Questions, questions. Uh, one would be this. All right. So let's, let's, let's set some action items. All right. Let's say we have somebody who just graduated from high school. Okay. Doesn't have any of this stuff, you know, what should they do? Um, you know, or like what should their, their, their goals be? Right. So from what I'm hearing you is that maybe they might be able to get a secured credit card that can just automatically go into a regular credit card. But if that doesn't work, if they're not, if they're not able to get that secured credit card, they yep. need to take that extra, that, that other step, right? You said self, self, self and kickoff. Yeah. Self and kickoff. There's more, but I'll listen to those. Cause I, I like them. They're like easy and cheap and simple and they build you up. Okay. But the goal would be to get a credit card. And you said, ideally, uh, two to three accounts. So maybe two to three credit cards, you know, yep. Yep. it makes sense to at your 18 start now so that you can start building that credit age and everything. Right. Yeah. So that's cool. But now here's the thing though, is that there's many different credit cards, <laughs> Not all yeah. credit cards are the same. So, nope. so I know one thing to look for is okay. When, when you're evaluating credit cards, see what what credit bureaus the particular credit card reports to because i know right. for example i know chase reports to all three of the credit bureaus some of these other credit cards don't report to all three so that's one of the things to look at also too what i mean i guess like certain credit cards are, are considered to be kind of like top tier credit cards yeah you, you want to stay away from like the store card you know? <laughs> yeah don't don't get those if, if if unfortunately that's where you start, that's where you start because the thing is too is this: if you only have a certain type of card, it makes it difficult to get like the higher tier ones because you that, that's what you're good for. So you have a whole bunch of store card. You can have a great credit score, but if you're trying to get like American Express, they'll be like, nah. Like it makes it difficult. So you do want to be look at what card you're getting, the bank it's from, because Capital One, Wells Fargo, eh, kind of fraudulent, <laughs> Bank of America. Um, I won't say Barclays, but these are like good banks that if you have these cards, it sets you up for being able to get the better cards on the line. So Whereas the American Express, like yeah, that. they're they they you have that. So it's almost like you're in the you're in the the boys like the big boys club of like credit and all that stuff. Like it's crazy, but like Credit One, if you get one of those, fine. It's not like it's not like it's not like if you get a lower tier card, you can't always move up. You can. It's that like you have to know how to play the game to get up there and demonstrate the income you have, keeping your DTI low, paying and just doing that. If you do that, you're fine. But yeah, not all credit cards are are, are equal and great because some of them you're just like annual fee is a big thing. Look at annual fee, 125. What? So some will have annual fee, and you understand like the fee is going to get paid. Whether you're ruined or not, like so, choose one that's like low or at zero. The ones that are really great have zero, but they have higher credit scoring um, requirements. Someone seven hundred, six ninety at the lower end. It's something you take. It's something you want to aim for. Doesn't mean you don't. You just aim for it. You know. Mm, good point. Good point. Uh, random question: Are you a member of Costco at all? You yes. 
Who is it as an adult <laughs> or Sam's Club? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Do do you have that Costco credit card? You know? That... Nah, I don't. Um, I've looked into it for business purposes, but nah, it's we just have the regular membership. So all right, right, right. We have one I've seen, and I'm just like. Nah, I don't know. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Business purpose is that that's a whole different ball game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's different. If you've yeah. got a big family and you're going all the time, because I know you, you know, the percentages and all that kind of stuff that they give. On the personal level, it's like, it, it seems cool, but like, just no. <laughs> right, 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 right. right. All right. So, so, yeah, so definitely, you know, try to, you know, the goal for these 18 year olds is to start early. And to try to get like, you know, these, these top two. I heard that like sometimes I heard that like if you like suppose you want to get a Chase credit card, if you open a bank account with Chase, that's going to kind of help you, I heard, in, in getting approved for, you know what I'm saying? Because you're kind of building a relationship. Yeah, that relationship. They like to see that, but it comes to underwriting and else. They don't care. They want to see the good history. And it's it sucks. But like they would prefer it because you're it's easy to grab the money if you're right. old, Right. But in the day, it's like they're more concerned with your credit history. Who else have you demonstrated this with? You know, so your banker wants you to prove, obviously, but underwriting's gonna be like, I don't care. Who who are you? I don't know who you are. Right, right, all right. Good point. All right, so top tier credit card, and then as they're as they're in their journey, they should be checking their actual credit report. A lot of them, a lot of people say, oh, I, uh, you know, Capital One has a little thing. Like, right, oh, right. But that's like Vantage Score stuff. And a lot of times it's not the real, real report. Like you can't, you know, look at like your personal information and all that kind of stuff you're talking about. Right. So what advice do you give people about how to go about getting their actual report? And I actually three of them, right? Three. Yeah, all three. You need all three. So two, two, two different uh, options on this one, you get it for free once a week now from annual credit report. They used to be once a year, which is stupid, but <laughs> You get it for free once a week. It will not give you a score. They'll make you pay for it. And there's, I forget why they did. There, there's a, they, they were, they were, so quick story of what the bureaus and all this stuff, right? Congress forced them to like, you have to give people access to, your, to their credit, credit reports more than like, without having to pay for it. And somehow, this is how you know these people are corrupt. They're trying to make money. They were like, we're just, we're just going to give this information away. We have to charge them for it. So he found some loophole in Congress where it's like, hey, we'll give them the credit report, but we'll make them pay for the score. Like, I kid you not, it was like, I was like, <laughs> so if that's one way you won't get a score, but do not think that if you pay to get the score, your information is different. So don't do it. Yeah. That's one way. Two, um, choose a credit monitoring service that gives you all three and gives you a FICO score. So there's my FICO. We, re we re recommend our clients use my score IQ. Um, cause that's going to give you both of them will give you your consumer FICO scores, which is what you see when you log in, but also your FICO scores. For, so that way we apply for a credit card or bank loan or I'm sorry, an auto loan mortgage score. Again, we give you a score. So you, that way you see, Hey, if I'm applying this credit card, Based on whichever um, FICO score they use, you'll see where you, where you stand on each of the three different bureaus. That's important to know. So there's that. It's worth wait, it. Wait, 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 repeat that. You said two two sites. You said my FICO. Yeah, my FICO and my score IQ. Okay. Got yeah. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to have that. Awesome. 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 All right. So, yeah. So so guys, when you're watching young adults, especially right, you know. Um, you want to make sure, you know, you start building credit early, open up credit cards, you know what I'm saying, early so that you're building credit age. Check your credit report. Now, okay, so you mentioned those accounts like your credit score, but to actually get the real credit report, right, is that website, the annual, you know, creditreport.com, right? Yeah, you can yeah. do that. Or if you're getting um, using my FICO or my score, they'll give you your reports from all three. So you can get the same information. The thing is, with that, you're going to get your scores along with where you're, you'll get, you'll get everything you need to know versus here's information, but as far as your score goes, pay us for it. So yeah. 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 This is two much, options. How, how much mm -hmm. is that? The, the my FICO and the my score IQ. I forget my FICO. My score IQ is 35, nine a month. Um, and then some of these 
credit monitoring services, what they'll do is like, here's the thing, like some of the different options, like I know my review has like a, if you want your, if you want to report every, every month, it's 35 dollars a month, but then, but then it's like, oh, well you can get it for like once, a, you can get your score once every three months for like 10 bucks. You're like, okay, that's great. Or they change up. I'm like, that's not, you don't want to do that. You want to pay for the subscription gives you, gives you, the gives you score every month, not every two months, three months. Because your your credit reports updated once a month by the bureaus. Two, your your information can be accessed and hacked any time of the day, no matter Monday, Friday, Sundays, holidays. Called fraud. So if you're only getting it once every three months, you're you're not you're screwing yourself in terms of staying on top of it. The other thing too is this: if you're a young adult, you won't. I'm say this too. This may, this may cause some um, fights. You want to check credit report now because unfortunately, I this is a common thing or it happens. And I've had one client where they found out their credit was already bad by the time they were 18. How has it happened? Someone hacked it. Their parents did. Sometimes, unfortunately, because parents jack up their credit will then use the social security of their children to be able to, I guess, in some cases provide or get stuff. And unfortunately, their habits transfer to that, don't, because it's not there, jack it up. And then the child turns 18, 20, whatever, and goes, well, I have bad credit. And they're like, yeah, you open an account at da -da -da. You're like, well, I was 10. It happens. So, young adults, you need to check your credit now to make sure you have zero. Like nothing. The only thing that should be on there is what you discuss with your parents, nothing else. That's it. And if you got some stuff on there, because yeah, that happens and it's sad. There's a, there's a, I saw a video on this recently of a mother with a grown, with her grown daughter and she confronted her and said, You use my social security to apply for things in my name. And a mother got expensive. Like, well, so, so what? So you're going to choose me or choose me or, or great credit. I'd be like, fix my credit you jacked it up like it happens this is something you need to know like yeah. better find out now than the yeah. pirate's apartment and like what in the world and you're just like i can't get anything it's not your fault right you're it, it's a form of child abuse you know it really is get it financial financial child abuse oh yeah so sad so sad yeah man um now here's what i i've i've notice being in the mortgage industry and the real estate is that oh yeah it's good enough a lot of people they get in trouble with the cars you know these car loans and everything oh, right? and so it's like hey guys you know really consider buying a used car maybe you know a used a slightly used car that you could really afford don't don't jump into these big car loans because that can kind of really mess up your whole DTI for applying for, you know, loans and stuff like that. So yeah, car loans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good old car loans. Right. <laughs> so you know, some people it's like highest payments. I'm like, why are you paying so much? No, just then they want a house. And it's like, you're not gonna, you're not, you need to forego that, get the home. And this is what it comes down to. It's about treating us like a game and leveraging things versus being leveraged by the game. Exactly. exactly right. Matt, this has been great. But now here's the thing now, you know, people that are watching are all different levels and, you know, all different ages too, even though we're kind of, we were kind of focusing more on the young adults, but yeah. um, with what you do, you're like, you, you are a specialist, you know, and this is why I love being able to have this network of people. We got different type of, you know, we had, you know, Pierre, who's a, a, a nutrition specialist, and now you're the credit repair specialist. So <laughs> can you explain to our audience, like, who is your ideal clients? Like, who are the real people that you, like, really help? Good question. So I can help everybody. So I have two. One, it would be the first time home buyers. You're out there. I know the more I know the market is not the greatest, but here's the thing. Now's the time to get yourself together so that way when the market changes and it will, you take advantage of it versus waiting and then realize you can't. Inflation sucks, it is what it is. But I would encourage you to so first time home buyers, one, two, the entrepreneurs or those who are um entrepreneurial who want to 
not just get your credit fixed, but learn how to leverage it mm -hmm. to achieve their financial goals and also change their inner money story. I'm also sort of, sort of a life coach, so I want to help them with that. And anyone else, even your first mobile, I talk about it because at the end of the day, your credit is simply a reflection of what you have going on, on the inside. And like I said before, in the day, credit is a band aid. If we don't address what got you in the first place, your inner money stories, how, how you feel about yourself, you can get the house and things, but then you're going to go right back to where you are because you have beliefs, subconscious beliefs to say, I'm not worthy, I'm going to have this, is bad, blah, blah. And you won't realize it, but then you'll just do it automatically because your unconscious mind's in control. It really is. So that's really, really looking to serve and work with. And, um, and even, 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 if, even if you just want your credit fix, fine. But let's work on your level to really see what's going on. That way you can have the life you want and, and have the money you want and, you know, do what it is that you love and want to do. So hmm. love it. I love it. I love it. This is good. This is good. So, and then, I mean, of course, in your, in your journey, you have worked with people that were just in really terrible situations, just overwhelmed with just, you know, like a bad, really bad credit. And then you kind of help them through that. Yeah. Cause it's really like, a, it's just educating people what it is, what their rights are. Mm. Saying, like, Hey, what, what can you, this is what you can do and just understand like you're in the process now. I'm like, just give yourself the time mm -hmm. is the biggest thing people don't do. Mm -hmm. I ain't done it. Yeah. If you rush it, it's going to take longer because you're putting energy into resisting where you're at. You got to get to learn how to accept it. And go cool and then magically when you actually just accept it you shift and then things work out to what you prefer i can tell you that from personal experience so love it i love it guys if you're watching if you have any questions feel free to leave questions in the chat box you know matt will see it and you know he'll respond and matt as we close can you share with us how people can reach you i think you have a slide i guess you can yeah i'm doing um put that back up yeah yeah let me blow it up a bit. I dare you. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. cell, office number, um, my Calendly link. Um, but you want to keep it real simple, let's go to a1solutionsgroup.com. Again, a number one solutionsgroup.com. Say, hey, I want to talk with Matt, whatnot, and go from there. Um, be able to reach me that way. So, hi. Right. And then we can schedule a free like consultation actually no a free credit strategy session actually and talk more about stuff yeah go from there so excellent excellent guys all right hitting matt up you know hey this is all about optimizing your health and wellness and a big part of your health and wellness is your finances and a big part of your finances is that credit score so definitely take advantage of these resources that we are bringing you matt thanks so much brother i appreciate it man thanks for having me on this has been fun Yes, we'll talk soon. All right. All right. Peace.